Hey friends, Mike Adams here with the Audacity Bootcamp. In this video, I want to talk to you a few minutes about the time track within Audacity. Let's explore that. Let's see what it is and what it'll do, and maybe it becomes a valuable tool for you. Audacity has a time track in it. It's not something you hear a lot about as podcasters. Really, I suppose it's more for music. If someone gets off the click track while they're recording, you can adjust the time or the pitch of the, your audio tracks uh, to adjust accordingly. But it may have a use in podcasting as well. It may be a tool that you want to explore and use in your own podcast editing because it's a way to slow down or speed up a track in addition to the Play at Speed toolbar. So let's take a look here. I've got this opened up on my laptop right now. This is actually a waveform from the previous video that I did. And this audio has been leveled to a minus 19 luffs. It's, you know, pretty good audio. It's not completely edited in terms of, you know, getting out the mistakes and stuff that were in it, but it's sufficient to do what we're going to do. So I have got the cursor or the playhead set at the zero position. And what I want to do first is just play a little bit of this track so that you can hear it. And then I want to introduce the time track to you and let's see what it'll do. So I'm going to push the space bar to play this. Hey, Mike Adams here with the Audacity Bootcamp. You know, I'm in a small room here. I'm in a room that's 10 feet by 11 feet, and so it's pretty cramped. There's other stuff in here. You can see pretty riveting stuff, isn't it? Well, let's introduce the time track to it, and let's play around with the time track, and let's see what the time track can do for us. If we go up to the Tracks drop-down menu, and we go to Add New, one of the options there, of course, we can do a mono track, we can do a stereo track, we can add a label track, or we can do a time track. So let's insert a time track. And when we insert the time track, it puts the time track in the project, which is what we want it to do. But it has this line right across the 100%. The 100 is ind indicative of the speed of the track. This is how it comes up in default. But if I come up to the drop down window or the drop down menu in the track, I can rename the track here just like any other track. I can move the track around. In this case, I can move the track down or move it to the bottom, which are really my only two choices right now. They're both really the same thing. And we see that we have a linear scale, which is what it comes up defaulted to, is that linear scale. And so I like to leave it at the linear scale because the linear scale is, you know, I'm at 100% speed right now, and I can raise or lower that. Let me close this window. I can raise and lower that by 10%. I can go up to 110% of my speed, which is going to increase... Uh, the speed of the track, or I can go down to 90, which is going to kind of slow it down just a little bit. Yeah, I can also change that. And so if I come back to this drop down window, I can go to range and I can tell it the lower speed range. Well, let's make that 80 instead of 90, shall we? And so when I click OK and the 100, the upper speed 110, let's make it 120, then it changes my, my scale. My scale now is from 80 to 120, and I'm going to drag this track down so we can see it a little bit better and see what's going on with it. And then I'm going to come up to my view menu, and I'm going to adjust the track size to fit to height. And that will get both of my tracks on there well. Now, I don't really see the 120 that I put in there, so let me drop this down again, and let's see what's going on with our range. So our lower range is 80. That's good. Our upper range, let's type 120 again. There it goes. I must have typed something wrong the first time. That happens. So now I've got a range in here from 80% original speed to 120% of original speed. I can slow down and speed up this track at different points. Now, it's kind of like the envelope tool. You've got that blue line in there, which is indicative of the current speed of the track. But if I take my cursor and I hold it over that line, you'll see that it turns to a double arrow just like the envelope tool does. So I can raise and lower that entire line by just holding down the mouse button, or in my case, the uh, trackpad, and lowering and raising that line. But let's say that I want to just slow down a portion of the track. If I put some control points in here, if I click here, and let's say I click again here, and then I click over here, and again here, remember you have to have four control points. If you remember our conversation on the envelope tool, you have to have four control points to adjust this level to make it work for you. So now I can come here and put my mouse on this control point here, and I can 
bring it down. I can bring the speed down. Let's go down to 80% or pretty close to it so that we can really hear what's going on. Now I'm going to come to this control point and let's kind of slide it over a little bit and, you know, maybe bring it down about the same. And then here, instead of coming back to 100%, let's take it up to, let's get brave and let's take it up to about 118 or so. So right now my playhead is at the zero point. I'm going to press the space bar and play this same track for you so that you can hear what happens as it goes through this automation that I just set up on the track speed. Hey, Mike Adams here with the Audacity Boot Camp. You know, I'm in a small room here. I'm in a room that's 10 feet by 11 feet, and so it's pretty cramped. There's other stuff in here. You can see the shelf behind me. I suppose that could be a useful tool for us as podcasters. If I've got an audio track that looks pretty clean, and I know there's no clipping in it, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of noise in it, I might be able to use this time track to speed up my editing. I could put this time track in, boost up my editing to 110% of normal or 115% of normal, and listen to it quicker that way. It's kind of similar. We haven't really talked a lot about the play at speed tool yet, which I'm planning on doing in a future video. But this area right here is the play at speed tool, which will kind of give me the same thing. I have a play button that's independent of the play button in the transport toolbar. And I also have a slider there where I can adjust my speed up and down of the entire track. Now this time track may be useful for you too if there's an area in your track where you want to slow it down. You hear something in there, you don't know what it is. You want to maybe slow it down and listen to it. Or perhaps you just want a special effect. Perhaps you're doing something where, you know, this person here, which happens to be me, uh, kind of just sounds like they're getting old and tired, which I kind of am. But, you know, maybe you want to do some kind of special effect. Let's play through it again and listen. Hey, Mike Adams here with the Audacity Boot Camp. You know, I'm in a small room here. I'm in a room that's 10 feet by 11 feet, and so it's pretty cramped. There's other stuff in here. You can see the shelf behind me. There. I sound a little nervous there at the end, don't I? Hey, I just wanted to introduce the time track to you. You can do with this what you want to do. It's a handy tool to have. Again, you can rename it. You can minimize it. You can select it just like any other track within Audacity. And hey, if you like what's going on here at the Audacity Boot Camp, please consider subscribing. Tell others about it. Ring that bell so that you don't miss any videos that I publish. So I'll let you go for now, and until next time, take care.